Hey y'all, so lately we've been getting a ton of rain. I mean, we got weeks and weeks of rain. And then on top of it, we got hit with a hurricane or tropical storm. And that just brought in so many more inches of rain. Everything that was already saturated is just that much more saturated. And this has opened up a perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. So I was in Lowe's the other day and I was walking down one of the aisles and I saw one of the traps that they have there that uses a light and a fan and pushes all of the mosquitoes down inside of it. But when looking at the box, I noticed that it said it covered up to a quarter of an acre. And I have a decent amount more acreage than a quarter of an acre, so I looked into whether or not they had something bigger, which I found online that they do have a larger one. Now the one at Lowe's was $70. The one I found online that was larger was I believe $180 to $190. So when I start getting into that price range, I start wondering to myself, is this something that I can build myself? It really seemed like just a few basic components. This is gonna be a little bit of a hybrid between what I found in the store and what is called a New Jersey light trap. And I drew up my master plan here. And uh, yeah, I've got no measurements. It looks like a four-year-old drew it, but you know, that's what I've got to go off of. I'm going to start putting all of these things together, uh, see how they fit together, and in a way that makes sense to me anyway. So let's go ahead and jump right in and see what I come up with. Let's go. So for the most part, all the traps that I've seen have been of a cylindrical shape. The New Jersey light trap is that way, and then also the one that I found in Lowe's. So it just made the most sense for the structure, the shell of this whole thing, to use a five-gallon bucket. Now I will not be needing this lid and I'm actually gonna turn this whole thing upside down. The bottom of this bucket is actually going to be the top of my trap. So I will not be needing the handles on this bucket so I can remove those. All right, so now I need to start focusing on where my holes are gonna go around the top of my trap here. That is where the mosquitoes are going to be pulled into. They're gonna come in before being sucked down. And they're partially attracted, not fully, partially attracted by this light fixture. This is one of the things I wanted to talk about that I mentioned earlier that I don't like with the ones you can buy in the store. The ones you can buy in the store come with black lights. Black lights, are de they're definitely gonna pull in a bunch of bugs. Not necessarily mosquitoes. Mosquitoes really are not proven to be attracted to black lights. But if you look at the New Jersey light trap, they use a 25 watt incandescent light bulb. Now, this is not gonna be super bright, but it is gonna provide a little bit of heat to help mimic a person. So I need to take this light fixture and based on its height and everything, figure out where I'm gonna make my holes all the way around. So I'll just lay that down like that. I got the top of my light bulb there. I actually want my hole to be just slightly beyond that. Now that I have my measurement of where the light bulb would be inside, which just ha so happens to come out to right at six inches from the very bottom of the outside of the bucket, I'm gonna make my marks all the way around the bucket so that I know my line to make my holes for. All right, so next I need to make lines all the way around closer to the top of this, and that's where the window is going to be for the mosquitoes to fly into. I'm personally gonna go with three inches from the bottom of the bucket, which is also then three inches from my previous line. So there will be a three inch opening all the way around for the mosquitoes to fly into. Now that I've got my two lines that go all the way around this for my opening to this, now I need to make lines going vertically as support. So I'll be putting four posts in, which means every about eight and a half inches, I will have a center of a post. So now I need to measure out the width of what I want each of the posts to be. I'm gonna go with an inch and a half. I feel like that would be plenty. All right, so now I've got all of my post mark. Now I can start cutting everything out on this first section. All right, so now that I've got those windows cut out, now I can actually start wiring up my light fixture. And again, this is just a standard lamp fixture, but this one does have a plug-in on it. And the reason I went with this one is just because when I mount my fan inside, now I can just plug it into this, whereas I was gonna have to lop off the plug and wire it into these terminals here. It's just gonna make it a whole lot easier. The other reason I went with this one is because 
it, since it has that plug, it has a ground screw in it. And the wiring I bought, which is for appliances, if you can see here on the wiring, you'll see there's a green wire for ground, black for hot, and white for neutral. And that's just going to make this all grounded, which anytime you can do that, that's the best way to do it. The whole thing is plastic, so I don't know how necessary that would be, but again, it's always better to put in better things. Okay, so the first thing I need to do in order to start wiring all this up is I need to run my cord through the bucket here. So I'm just gonna put a hole here in the top of the bucket where I can run my wiring through into the fixture. All right, so now I've got my hole cut for the wiring, I can now feed my wiring into the bucket. Once I've got enough wiring in there for the light fixture, then I'm going to take my fingers and grab right here at the edge of the bucket and then feed it the rest of the way through. Where my fingers are is marking the amount of wire that I need in the bucket. So from here to here for the fixture. So here, I wanna put a knot in this wiring so that if anybody comes along and yanks on the wire, it doesn't pull it out of the light fixture. Because if it pulls it out of the light fixture and they yank on it, then as long as it's plugged in, you have a live wire. So now with this not being in place, it can't be pulled out of the bucket. All right, so I'm gonna take this fixture and I actually ended up notching out a little area here so that my cord would go through easily and sit flush. And now I can start wrapping them around each of the screws. So I'm gonna start with the green ground wire I'm gonna connect it to this green ground screw on the fixture. I'm gonna wrap it around there in a clockwise direction. The idea is going around in a clockwise direction. As I tighten down this terminal screw on top of it, it's gonna help pull that wire in close to the center of that screw, which is just gonna provide a better connection. All right, so now I'm gonna attach the white neutral wire to this silver screw. Silver is going to be for your white neutral. So again, same thing, gonna wrap around it in a clockwise direction and then just tighten it down nice and firm. I'm gonna take this black line wire and put it on this brass colored screw. So now I need to center my fixture and once I've got it centered, then I need to mark where I want to drill my holes for the bolts that are gonna hold this in place. Now that I've got my marks made, I can make my holes. Now typically when you install a light fixture like this, the bolts run up through the light fixture and into a junction box. I elected to run them down through the bucket and then through the holes in the light fixture and use nuts to then tighten down the nuts onto the light fixture to pull it up to the top of the trap. It's just gonna make for also a cleaner look on top and also just makes it really easy to seal in with some caulk. All right, so now I've got that light fixture mounted up in the trap. Now it's time for the fan. Don't need this stand. Uh, we're not going to need the front grill, so I'm going to disassemble some of this and then mount it into the trap. I'm going to make sure that I hold on to the bolts that I pull out, though, because I will probably need them a little bit later to mount them into the trap. So now I've got screws going all the way around this fan, and I really don't need this front grill. In fact, it's taking up a little bit of extra space and it just doesn't need to be there. So I'm just gonna pull all these screws out and remove the front grill. All right, so now I've got my holes cut that are gonna go in that little tab there. That's where the stand was connected. I'm gonna take those same bolts that were connecting the stand to it, and we're gonna put them in through the bucket and then in through that hole to really mount it in place. I'm going to screw that screw through there and you should be able to see the screw coming through that hole in the fan. So now I'm just going to do the same on the other side. And that thing isn't going anywhere. Now that that fan's in place, now I'm going to plug it into the outlet that's on the light fixture. All right, so now that all of that is in place, now I'm going to put vents all the way around the bottom portion of this bucket. Kind of like I did up top here, they're going to be a little bit narrower. And what this is going to allow for is the fan is going to be able to just vent and breathe a little bit better, which will make it more efficient. 
and at the same time it can provide some windows so that when I go to remove the basket out of the bottom to get all of the bugs out, I can spray in an insecticide to just take care of the rest of the bugs that might still be alive so that when I take that basket off, they don't just fly away. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this outside. I'm going to paint the whole thing black. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because mosquitoes are more attracted to darker colors than they are lighter colors. And while this is a navy or royal blue, and it's kind of dark, I just really want the whole thing to be uniform. And it's gonna, golly, it's gonna allow for this bucket to stay warm during the day, drawing in that heat. So in the evening time, it may remain a little bit warm, kind of mimicking a body. And on top of that, what it's going to do is it's going to help to protect this bucket from the sun's rays. I'm also going to be painting this lid and I'll show you a little bit later what I'm gonna do with that. All right, so now that my paint is all dry, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put screening all the way around the bottom of this bucket where all these little windows are. So that way, all the bugs that get trapped, they can't get out. And I'm gonna do that by using just this standard patio screen that can be picked up pretty much anywhere. And I'll just cut one fairly big piece that goes all the way around the inside of the bottom of the bucket, covering up all those windows, and I will adhere it to the walls of the bucket using some caulk. Now I can already sense some comments that might be coming and they'll probably look something like this. That caulking or that screen doesn't look good and no, it doesn't. I would not want that in my living room at all. Once I started putting that screen around, it was just smashing that caulk all over the place and it's just not a clean look. But from the outside, I'm really not gonna be able to tell and more importantly, it's functional and holding that screen in place, which is really all that I care about. But don't worry, I did do my due diligence and I surveyed some of the future residents of this trap and 150 out of 10 mosquitoes all said the same thing. And that's that they really didn't care, which I found to be very encouraging. And I just wanna make sure that they're having a good time and relaxing and most importantly, sleeping well in their final home. This particular lid has the middle that spins out and this is going to be important for the way that I'm going to be installing the bottom portion of my trap. So I'm going to be mostly focused on the middle portion of the part of this lid that actually spins out. I'm actually going to be making a hole or a cut along this little ridge here before it dives down all the way around so that I have a hole right in the middle and it just leaves me with the outer part of that ring that spins out of the bigger ring. Well, I was doing some testing with the fan with just the vents around the bottom portion and it was really bogging down the fan. There was not enough airflow. So I need some airflow in the very bottom. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put some screening all along the inside of this so that the bugs can't fly out once they've been blown down inside. And it's also gonna create kind of a bowl for them to get blown down into. All right, so now I've got my bucket lid back now, and now I'm gonna run a bead of caulk all the way around this little ring right here. All right, so now I'm going to take the front grill, and I'm just going to set it down into that caulk. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some little screws, and I'm gonna put them down through each of the holes that originally was holding this grill onto the fan. And so when this is attached to the bottom of the trap, all I have to do in order to take this basket off is just spin this off. And obviously gravity will help keep the bugs in the bottom. This is upside down and it'll just pull off like this. This will remain on the trap. All right, so now all that's really left as far as building this is figuring out how to hang it. Now I could just take the handles that I took off and bend the hooks in to where it just hangs underneath of here. But I bought some of these eye bolts and I'm gonna use some light duty chain and some little hooks just so I can quickly disconnect it from whatever it is I have hanging it from. So I'll just quickly install that now. All right, so now the trap is pretty much completely built. So now I'm going to reinsert the 25 watt incandescent bulb and test it out. All right, so the light is working and now let's turn on the fan. And the fan is spinning. All right, so now that I know all of my components are working, now it's all about getting the mosquitoes to it. But what's most important is some form of bait or attractant. And a lot of the traps that are out there just don't offer this, but it's probably like the key ingredient in order to having a successful trap. 
A lot of people know that when you exhale, you give off carbon dioxide, and that's what a lot of mosquitoes are attracted to. This product is called Octanol, and that is what it is mimicking. There are different lures or attractants for different regions of the United States. This particular one is great for the northern portion of the United States and into Canada. The mosquitoes there are more attracted to that carbon dioxide. Down in the south, not the mosquitoes are not attracted to that, but some of the breeds of mosquitoes down here in the south are more so attracted to the scent that your skin gives off, especially like perspiring skin gives off that strong scent. Well, a lot of mosquitoes down here are actually attracted to that and really only attracted to that. So there's this product out that's called Attracta and that's exactly what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to mimic the scents that come off of your skin. So since I'm in the South, I'm gonna be using the Attracta, which is the one that mimics more of your skin scent. I'm just gonna take that little bag and I'm gonna lay it down here in the basket and that fan's gonna to help to blow that smell right out the bottom. All right, so now before I take this outside and put it to the test, it's getting pretty dark. I'm gonna spray all of my screening with an insecticide that I've been using for many years and that's Talstar P. I treat the perimeter of my house with this stuff and it works phenomenally. So the idea is I'm gonna spray all of the screening and as those mosquitoes make contact with it, they should die off a lot faster. So when I go and collect the bowl to get them all out of there, they should already be dead. All right, so we'll check back in one to two days and see what we got. All right, so I'm just gonna grab this whole thing just to see what we got. The yellow flies seem to be out in force this morning. All right, let's see what we got inside. All right, so as you guys can see, lots of bugs in here. And this is over a very small time frame. I can only imagine how many would be in here after a few more days or even a week. Now your eyes are gonna be drawn to these bigger bugs in here, but the smaller ones, like all these little dots up in here, these are all mosquitoes. Those are all mosquitoes. Those are all mosquitoes. So the population of mosquitoes in here far outweighs the other bugs that did get sucked into this trap. Now I did unfortunately get some bugs in here that I was not exactly excited about. Like there's a beetle here and there's a moth there and there's some other moths around here as well. But I did get this wasp right here and there's a couple other wasps over here. I think in total there were four or five wasps in the trap. And if you look down here, this yellow bug, that's a yellow fly. And I got a decent amount of those in here as well, which to me, those are as bad as mosquitoes. They're awful and good riddance to those. If they keep finding themselves in this trap, I am super happy about that. Now it's also catching quite a few mosquitoes in the screening all around the walls of this trap here. So it's not just catching them down in the bottom trap, it's also catching them in this screening all the way around. So I just want to show you guys some real quick results over the small time frame as to what maybe you can expect if you buy one of these in the store or if you build one yourself. So I can definitely see how it's going to cut down my mosquito population and hopefully the stinking yellow flies. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and put it back out there. All right guys, so I hope that you found this video to be interesting. This really was a fun project to do and even more fun to see that it's working really well. Overall, couldn't be happier with this. It's definitely getting rid of a lot of the bad bugs that I really don't want anymore. And I saved a bunch of money. It, I think this ran me around 60 bucks or so, whereas in the stores and online I saw it for 180, 190, somewhere in there for that bigger one that I would need. So. Again, couldn't be happier with this. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those down in the comment section down below. And I hope to see you in the next one. See ya.